Good afternoon. Uh, today we have Jose Condi with us from uh, Stellenbosch, South Africa. And Jose is, uh, has a unique uh, perspective on the wine world because he is an American, an expat who actually came to South Africa around roundabout that way. Uh, now he is renowned as probably one of South Africa's top winemakers and basically he's leading a revolution of young winemakers who are really bringing South Africa to the fore. And, uh, you know, just with the exposure that they have to the wine world of the old, the old boys that were there who are now being replaced didn't. And this is, this is really one of the best things you can see for South Africa. So, uh, Jose, uh, thank you for stopping by. And uh, let's talk about uh, basically a little bit about, about your background and uh, your, your connections to South Africa, et cetera, and how you ended up there and how you started making wine, which is kind of a unique situation. Sure, I'm. Uh, uh, I was born and raised in Independence, Missouri, and uh, usually the next question people ask me, "How did I end up in South Africa?" Well, the short answer is a woman took me there. Uh, my wife's family they were wine growers in Stellenbosch, and uh, I came out there, and she wanted to live closer to her parents, and uh, I went out there originally planning to do something else to be a designer, uh, but uh, I quickly looked around at all these vineyards and I thought, well, let me try my hands get my hands dirty a little bit and try to make a few wines. I always loved wines, but never thought about making it. So I started with six barrels of wine. And from there, slowly, slowly, I built up two wine business, Stark Conde, which is our family estate in Stellenbosch, and uh, Man Family Wines, uh, which is a winery I started with two winemaking friends um, in 2001 from vineyards out in the Parle area. Now, your winemaker, this is, aren't those the Mybergs out of Yostenberg? Yes, Mybergs from, they have a, um, uh, a fairly well-known wine estate called Eustenberg, which focuses on organic wines. Yes, exactly. Now, it's interesting because you basically, you're kind of, you're self-trained or, and then you, did you go to the University of Stellenbosch? No, no, I just, I'm, I'm self-taught. People which is, say, well, I never, I never, I never studied, but well, I've, I've studied a lot <laughs> over many years. Um, it's wine is something you never stop studying, but uh, I never I never went to school. Okay, cause, okay, that that dispels those rumors, but yeah. that's quite interesting because one of the first wines Cabernets you made weren't you a five star platter? Yes, yeah, the first which wine we produced was which is amazing, yeah. right? And then so you raised the bar, very, you set the very, bar high. Yes, I very foolishly thought I knew a lot, and uh, <laughs> well, obviously, it's taken me fifteen twenty years to make that wine again. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, still searching. Excellent. So uh, let's talk about uh, the Stark County because that's back in the Yonkersook Valley, which to me is one of the most amazing little spots in South Africa. It's just a little tiny, narrow valley. I mean, it's Yeah, just... it's really a, a, a spectacular place. It's really, it's, a, it's, a, it's what we call a ward within Stellenbosch region. And um, it's a little, t it's the smallest ward in Stellenbosch. In fact, it was made for our property originally. Um, it's very unique. Um, it, as you said, it's a very narrow valley with uh, high mountainous walls, and our vineyards are all in the mountains there. So for Stellenbosch, it's, um, it's a, a cool site uh, with higher elevation, and uh, it's, it's well known for Cabernet. We produce a lot of Cabernet. It's about 70% of our production is Cabernet or Bordeaux varieties. So um, we think of ourselves first and foremost as Cabernet producers. Yeah, right. The three pine vineyard is, is is fantastic, actually. Now, what's the tie-in? Obviously, is Neil Ellis still is, are they still taking fruit off off of the uh, off of that vineyard, or is no, it pretty, we, pretty much reverted to you guys? Yeah, it's it's reverted from last from the two thousand and sixteen vintage. I got to remember now. Uh, it's a hundred percent in our hands. Okay, yeah, okay. Two thousand and fifteen. Sorry, right. two thousand and fifteen. So we had a long association. As growers uh, supplying Neil Ellis wines, but all those contracts are finished, and we okay, make it all ourselves. Okay, interesting. All right, yeah, because yeah. that's that's a, that's a pretty special spot. If I'm not mistaken, that's one of the wettest spots uh, in South Africa. I it mean, is. You get yeah. close to around forty inches of rain a year, uh, or what? Yeah, I don't know how you so bring it down. Something like inches, that. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was told. And then, then the other place that there's a crow flies maybe fifteen miles away is in France, where Bokenhuskloof is at, and they get about the same amount of wine right up, up there, yes. and which there are trout farms in the area in both both spots. Yeah, it's, it's just... very wet, it's a very wet spot, but it's wet in the winter time. Yeah, right. And actually, yeah. it's it is an in, interesting point on the wines because um, we get eighty percent of our rainfall in the winter time, and the one characteristic of the Yonkersuk wines that people often talk about are the fine tannins. You often hear people talk about the elegant tannins of Yonkersuk or the fine tannins of Yonkersuk. So when you think about what is the characteristic of the terroir, 
Um, we often talk about this tannin quality that it has, very soft and refined. Sure, so it's like an elegance with power still. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, what is the total production of Stark County? Because I know it's small. It's probably always going to stay the same. You can never grow the three pines, obviously. It's but very the small vineyard. You could probably... Yeah, we plan on growing a little bit. Look, right now we're producing about, um, about 120,000 bottles of wine a year. Um, throughout our, our various wines. Okay, so know. that's very small, so, actually. Yeah, it's relatively small. And then the man thing, which is obviously mm -hmm. a completely different project. Yes. You, you, you know, that's, that's your drive item, obviously. I mean, there's... Yeah, man, we, 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 we run the two quite separately, so we have a different production team and site for doing the man wines. Uh, man, we're really focused on doing um, the best value wines that we can. Not the cheapest wines, but the best offering the best value from S South Africa that there is. And uh, within that, we're focused on one area, a little sub-region of Parle called the Fuhr Partiburg, um, that, an area that's quite special for Chenin Blanc. It's got a very large basin of shale, and the Chenin seems to have an affinity for the shale there. So there, we're really trying to offer as much value to the consumer as possible. Now, how are the vines on this? Because these are fairly old vines. For yeah, this. well, we've got a lot. We've got 600 acres of vine of Shannon vineyards that are over 30 years old. So the average age in this um, is is over 25. So is this Shannon uh, along with the Tormentosa, obviously? But I think the focus is going to be more on this and the Tormentosa. Mm -hmm. But is this how many thousands of cases do you make of the Man Shannon or? or Oh, and can you go to the 600 acres? Obviously, there's a lot of Well, we have a lot of room to grow. Um, we do. Um, so I, I, that's what our growers have, our growers, and our growers are partners in our business. So um, we can't, we're not even close to taking up all of that. So um, they also work with other people. But, um, yeah, so we have plenty of room to grow. But we produce about uh, 30,000 cases of this wine. Yeah. And it's had great success, obviously. The last couple of years has been highly reviewed. And uh, we were talking earlier that this might be one of the best white wine values in the planet, period. It really is. It, it's pretty spectacular. And obviously, the growth of the wine and the way it's been accepted, it, it shows. And we were also speaking earlier about a few years back, you couldn't get Shannon away out of South Africa. And now there's this upkick and people are figuring it out. And as my experience in the past was, you'd have a hard time selling the Shannon Blanc, but I could always sell the Vouvray. And I'm going... <laughs> what's what's the difference? I mean, there is yeah. a difference, obviously, flavor profile or whatever, maybe, but it is a Chenin Blanc, uh, and so maybe you should have <laughs> named it something else yeah. initially. But now it's found its own legs. Well, I think that you know, you know, it used to be. A, I I I always tell a story. I met a guy a long time ago that worked in the early days in the California wine industry, and he said when he first started that um, that he worked for a, a very well known Napa winery, and he said that. Uh, at the time, Shannon was their most prized wine out of Napa, and that if you wanted to buy a case, you had to buy 10 cases of Napa Cabernet. So it, 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 it was... <laughs> things have changed. Things have changed, but you know, everything has a cycle, and I do, see, I do see a new generation of wine drinkers out there that have a new idea of what they like and are looking for, to try new things and are, are receptive. And, and actually, I think, well, I think we've also gotten much better at producing it. Um, frankly, I think we understand it better. We understand how to handle it in the cellar better. When I first went to South Africa, I, I was a late convert, converter, I'll tell you that, because when I first went to South Africa and tasted a lot of the Shinnons, I was like, well, these all taste soapy to me. I, I really, they didn't excite me. Right. And I, I didn't really, I didn't work with it for a very long time. And it wasn't until we started growing our man business that we started playing with it more and trying different fermentation techniques and tasting a lot more Shinnons. And uh, the more I, we worked with it, the more I found with the right treatment, it made a great wine. And no, it's fantastic. Some of the yeah. stuff we're getting, and there's great interest now. And obviously, I'm fortunate enough here to be able to try a lot of Shannon, different styles, obviously. But uh, it's there, and, and what makes it work, it's such a great food wine. Shannon is one of the, it's probably the most understood, misunderstood white varietals in the world because you can do every. A spectrum you can make it bone dry, sweet as can be, across board, and can age forever. And it really, it is, so the affinity for what it can do is just an amazing thing. But it just comes down to people's perceptions of what it's supposed to be. You know. And yes, you're you're right about that. It can it can suffer from that because people are not always sure about the style that they're getting. So we tried to express that clearly, um, you know, um, so people know, so they're not surprised. 
but I think you're right. I mean, in that it's a very versatile wine in making, and you can serve with anything. That's the old the old the old saying is that if if you're not sure what to you, what to pair food with, chin and blanc. <laughs> <laughs> and you can use it. It's very good with especially with modern type of cuisine that we have today where people mixing different flavors from all over the world and different spices yeah. there can be a little bit more challenging to match and Chenin Blanc works wonderfully for that. Yeah and here in the California market where we're from obviously uh, with California cuisine lighter foods and we also have a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, Asians here and uh, you know from, be it from subcontinent of India to uh, the Far East and the wine with its high acidity or whatever and great fruit really works well with those foods. Mm. I mean, it's just a, it's, it's a fantastic match. So it's Chenin Blanc is something, obviously, that if you do, or if you're not sure of what to do, try. You'll be surprised, and obviously. But what we like most of all from Jose are his Cabernets. I mean, the Cabernets from uh, Stark County are, are pretty special. And we think they're some of the best values in the world. Seriously, they really are. I mean, we get to try a lot of wines from a lot of places, and we do still try, even though we specialize in Southern Hemisphere, we try to try California, et cetera, because we want to get a, get an idea of what we're selling, what we're up against. And it's pretty hard to find this quality, this price point. And a lot of it also has to do with the RAN. I mean, the RAN, it must kill you being over here now. <laughs> you know? But for us, it's a phenomenal thing because yeah. the price, if you can't, you know, take advantage of what you can, folks. South Africa can allow you to have incredible quality at really inexpensive prices that will way over deliver in every way. They really are. It's just, it's just the way it is. So take it and work with it in your favor. All right. Thank you. Thank well, you very great much. Great job.